All right. So as you saw in the first segment, there is great value in expressing our thoughts in matrix notation. So this is something that we're going to do once again right now, which is try to somehow express this process of computing Fibonacci numbers as a matrix. And if we're able to do that, we'll be off to the races because matrices sort of tell the story themselves. They tell you what to do. So let's see. Here's the definition of the uh, Fibonacci iteration. Every next Fibonacci number is the sum of the two preceding ones. You cool with this? All right. So let's write this in the matrix notation. Can you think about uh, how to write this in matrix form? Kind of seems a little silly, but it's actually more helpful than you'll first think. How about this? Is that all right? Does that work? So it seems unhelpful, but it's actually a fantastic step in the right direction. Because actually, look what I'll do. I'll, uh, I'll show in matrix form how to go from one pair to the next pair to the next pair. So I'm calling this pair number one, and I'm calling this pair number two, and I'm calling this pair number three. So here is how I'll write it for the nth case that f sub n and f sub n plus 1, this is the nth pair, equals a two, the 2 by 2 matrix. We're going to call that A. And we're going to do, have some fun computing its eigenvalue decomposition. Times f sub n. f actually will go in the same order. So here we set nth, n minus first. But here we'll go in the same order as over here. n minus first, and then f sub n. OK, so for this relationship to be true, what are the entries in this matrix? So what numbers? Let's talk about the first row. So, so the first row needs to have such numbers that the result is f sub n. So it's actually the easier one, which makes it harder to answer. Yeah, 0, 1. Everybody's on board with 0, 1? 0, 1. So that's sort of the silly row that just helps you shift by 1. And then, of course, this one is 1, 1. Is 1, 1. OK, let's see if it works. Let's start with the first pair. and multiply it by this matrix. So 0, 1, 1, 1, and the first pair is 0 and 1. OK, why don't you guys multiply this in your head, in your collective head, and tell me what the result is. 1, 1. It works. The second pair is 1, 1. Now let's plug in the second pair. Do it in civilized manner. One one. What do you get? One two. So we get the next pair. So this is kind of silly, but we're just making sure it works. What about one two? What do you get? Two three. So do you guys see how it's working? Let's try five eight and see if we get eight thirteen. Five eight. And 8, 13. So it takes us from the nth pair to the n plus first pair. So that matrix, quote unquote, works. So then I claim that if we were to start with the first pair and we want to get to the nth pair, here you have to be careful not to shift the whole thing by 1. You just have to do this multiplication n times. 
You guys are with me on that? Oh, I'm right on the equal sign. So there you go. This is exactly where the eigenvalue decomposition will come into play because we need to raise this matrix to the nth power. So is it all beginning to come together? And what do you think the eigenvalues of this matrix are? Well, they'll have something to do with the golden ratio. So that's where the golden ratio will come from, the eigenvalues of this matrix. And then I'll just show you, or actually I'll ask it in the form of a question. So we're actually interested just in the nth one. So from this product, which gives you f sub n and f sub n plus 1, how would you extract? So it's easy in English. We just have to take the first entry, right? We're only interested in the first entry. But is there a way to express it in the language of matrices? Just take the first entry. Do this multiplication and just take the first entry. How would you say that in the matrix of languages? And that'll give you f sub n, because that's the one we're interested in. Just f sub n. How about this? Just multiply it on the left by 1, 0. You see how that works? How that works nicely? So stick, stick it in here, 1, 0. And actually, as a grand finale of this little segment, let me just write it down, f sub n equals 1, 0. Transpose. People who love matrices love the transpose. So why not? Times 0, 1, 1, 1 to the nth power times 0, 1. Is that nice? The entire Fibonacci algorithm is captured in matrix form. And so we can declare victory on this little segment. Pause, erase the board, and then just compute the nth power of this matrix. Sounds good? All right, let's do that.